for joining us today. Um, I have many questions. It was quite a season, so much to talk to y'all about. First things first. <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> so have y'all recovered from the reunion? First, that's what I want to know first. How was the reunion for y'all? <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> that was a politically correct I mean, answer. I definitely feel like we recovered. I mean, we're, we're on to the next. Yeah. Okay. I love it. <laughs> I have always wanted to know what goes into reunion look, because I feel like y'all are especially known for your reunion looks. Like, everyone is always looking forward to the Housewives of Atlanta looks. Do you coordinate, like, what is the day before a reunion like? Are you texting each other on outfits? Like, give us the behind the scenes Oh, tea. no. <laughs> no, we don't tell each other what we're wearing, honey. No. Yeah, that's a secret. No, it's got to be a surprise. It's got to be a moment <laughs> when you walk out. Uh, no, it takes a lot. But first, um, the network and um, everyone comes together, and they decide what color we wear. And then we have to go through the process of trying to find a gown or get something made or whatever the parameters are. And then just hold your breath and hope that it's a hit. <laughs> and so hope far, that it fits, it's too. It's been a hit. <laughs> it agree. hits and it fits. <laughs> and it fits. And it fits. And it fits. That's the key part. Um, I also am curious, because I feel like you guys, especially on this cast, you might come at each other during the season, but I feel like just like you just said, you, you always have a sense of positivity and camaraderie, even if you're not necessarily all getting along. Do you feel like that's on purpose, and does any of that have to do with the fact that you feel responsibility as black women to, to, to support one another at the end of the day? Or no? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, for me, I know we go at it. We have our difference of opinions. We're very strong-minded. But I have to say, when I rupture my Achilles in Jamaica, I really felt the love. Like, I think it was right after surgery. I came out, and I woke up and saw Sheree and Sonya in my house. I was like, what? Like, out of everyone, I just didn't expect for them to be the first to come visit me. So I can say for that moment, and I say it all the time, like, I appreciated that moment. So I feel the love, and I feel like we really have a sisterhood, you know? Yeah. There's yeah. love. There is. Yeah. yeah, and I would like to add, as the newbie, sorry, guys, I keep losing my voice every day. Um, I feel the same way. It's been incredible to be a part of this group. Being new to Atlanta, I felt so much love. And yes, sometimes we have differences of opinions, but I can call on every single person on this stage and they show me love and they help me whatever they, way I need it. So it's awesome to be a part of the Real Housewives of Atlanta, baby. I'm curious, um, for those of you who have been on the show before or who were already here, did it change the dynamic of the group um, having Marlo finally get her peach this season and having... Yes. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I was just wondering if it changed the dynamic of the group with having Marlo finally get her peach this year. Are you asking our opinion or her opinion? Let's start with y'all. I mean, the existing group. I mean, I think it changed and it didn't change. I mean, I think Marlo's always been a part of the group because she's been with us for a very long time. Yeah. I think the things that, that did change that were pleasant changes that were, you know, we get to see more of her life. We got to learn more about her mom. We got to learn more about her life nephews. with her nephews. You know, we got to learn more of those things. Yeah. Yeah. Did you feel like it was different going from being kind of on the show here and there to officially, I have my peach? You know what, it just felt good. I felt it was time. And no, I've always, <laughs> I felt that I always speak my mind. I live in my truth. I may not word it correctly, but you always know what I'm thinking. And I'm never gonna back down from it or lie about it. But um, it was totally different as in, the filming 24 seven at my home. But I always filmed a lot when I was a friend. I was always with the girls, always felt a part of them. Yeah. How is it? Love you, baby. <laughs> the people love Marla. <laughs> How has it been with, with you and your nephews? What's the latest with your family right now? With my nephews and I, it has been amazing. I have a life coach now. <laughs> Thank God, uh, the boys are doing great. Michael just got all A's and B's. Yes. All 
A's and one B that I complained about on his report card. And we're just, we're a work in progress. I mean, I feel that God does not make any mistakes. They were meant to be here with me and they're just making me be a great person. Michael's like, auntie, are you on time? You have to be on set. He's like, send me your schedule. He knows everything I'm doing this weekend. So it feels good to feel loved and not have to run to a man for it, but to have these two young men who look up to me, love me, and they hold me accountable. You had um, some, shall we say, uh, interactions this last season with a couple ladies, uh, including Kenya and Candy. Where do you and Kenya stand right now? Where, where would you say your relationship is? I stand to the left of the couch on this stage, and she stands to the right, what well, sits to the right. And I, Candy, I apologize too. I think that we will get over, what, you know, the bump that we went through, and we're good. It's just a work in progress. I mean, it's a lot to handle on Marlo, and right now I'm so happy because I just feel it's Marlo's time right now, and I just want anyone around me who can celebrate me. So it's like I'm not looking for acceptance. I'm not looking for your apology. I'm just doing me, but want to be the best at doing me and still not be rude. Yes. <laughs> Candy, anything to add to that? <laughs> no. Appreciate it. Um, so Kenya, I wanted to, to chat with you a little bit. You had also an amazing season. She is the moment. Um, <laughs> first, how it how is it? <laughs> Kenya Moore. <laughs> I can't. Hey, I so, love you guys. That makes me feel so good. You don't understand. I love you guys so much. Yes! Yes, energy! Yes, energy! Yes! <laughs> so speaking of Kenya Moore Hair Care and your endeavors, you were reached recently on Dancing with the Stars. Um, yes. And I saw that you were also in the audience supporting Miss Teresa Judice on her season. Um, what was it like for you? Go, like, did you give her advice? What, were, are you guys still close after after girls' trip? Tell me. Everything. Oh yeah, you know, I had worked with Teresa before, um, just like years ago, and doing something outside of Bravo, and we connected then. But we really bonded during the girls' trip, and I love Teresa so much. And um, when she called me about Dancing with the Stars, I was like, yes, do it, because she was on the fence. And I said, no, absolutely do it. It will be the time of your life. And she was so happy that she did. And I had to come, the, you know, her first dance and, you know, making sure that she was gonna be okay. And it was great. She did a great job, right? She was good, yeah. And you and Sheree this season, I feel like you guys had some, a little bit of a messy history, but I feel like you guys came together this season. Where are you guys close now? And how are you able to get past you know, the, the season's past? You know, I think the thing is with um, Sheree or any housewives, as long as they don't go below the belt, we, we can get over anything. And Sheree, we have fought about stupid stuff like houses and baseboards, baseboards. and trim. <laughs> like, you know, really? <laughs> That's lightweight, you know? So I feel like as long as you keep it above the belt and you don't try to destroy someone, then I think that, you know, we can always recover from that. So yeah, she, I love Sheree. She knows that. We're, I'm probably on the phone with Sheree and Candy more than anybody, so yeah, we're good. So it sounds like some people who have gone below the belt were maybe not moving past those things still. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you how Brooklyn is and how's co-parenting? What's the latest with your family? Oh, Brooklyn! Oh, love so Brooklyn. Cute. Yes! Um, it broke my heart actually coming here because it was the first time that she cried and said, Mommy, don't leave. I want to go. Don't leave me. And she started crying. And I, honestly, as a mom, I was like, I'm canceling the trip. I'm not leaving my child. <laughs> She's crying I, and she needs me. And I just, I, I really felt bad. Um, but we got past it and I made sure that my family was around her. Um, in terms of, and she's doing amazing by the way, she's bought the boss of me. Uh, <laughs> she's telling me how to wear her hair, what shoes she wants to wear, all her outfits. Um, so that's different. Uh, <laughs> um, but in terms of co-parenting, uh, there really is no co-parenting really. Unfortunately, I hope that to be in a better place at some point, um, I'm just gonna keep um, being positive and prayerful and hopefully 
it'll be better yes. in the future. Um, speaking of positivity, are we dating? Are we putting ourselves out there? What's the tea? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, don't you think I should be dating now? We should. Okay. Okay, good, thank you. It's, I mean, I've been separated for three years. I mean, it's time, right? So it's time. It's time. So I think, you know, my divorce will be final any moment, I hope. And uh, my DMs are blowing up. And <laughs> but yeah, no, there's some people around. There's some people around. Some people around, yeah, okay. Yeah, some contenders. Do we have anyone to set up Kenya with? Anybody? Anyone? She don't need no help right now. Oh. They flocking. She said she don't need no help right now. Oh, yes. <laughs> the person who did is actually not here, but it wasn't Candy, I'll say that. Oh. Wait, what? <laughs> First of all. <laughs> She talking about Mayetta, but when I introduced you to Mayetta, I told you Mayetta had a lot of friends that she could introduce you to. Okay. Oh. So don't do it. So that was a friend hookup for the hookup. Got it. <laughs> um, Drew, I wanted to, to turn to you because you also had such an interesting season. I feel like you put so much out there about your marriage and, and your kids this season. Um, how was it this season with, with being so open about, in the past couple of seasons, your marriage and just everything happening in your family. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but it's marriage, you know, anyone who's in a relationship or married knows that it's not, you know, one note. It's very layered, it's a roller coaster ride. You have your good days, you have your bad days. Um, and so we are choosing to stay in counseling. I think that is the most important thing you can do. And then of course, with Ralph also being a step parent, you know, we're opening about that too, because that is very, very challenging. Uh, blending families and so we just continue to push through but we take our vows very very seriously we love each other but um, yeah no it's hard when you have an argument on camera I'm not gonna lie yeah I was wondering for you candy too and also um, Sonia if I'm curious when you see the comments and the arguments when you watch it back on camera what's happening at home are y'all like dissecting this real time like what's the what's the blowback once the episodes have aired when it comes to your personal relationships um, I hate to watch arguments back. Yeah. I said that in any relationship, in your personal relationship with our, you know, with our husbands, our men, or whether it be with my mom or whatever, we all, and with each other, it's like, we have the argument when it actually happens, you have the argument again when you see it on TV because you get mad again, and then we have the argument again when we have the reunions. <laughs> so it's like, you have to go through it three times whenever you're doing this show, and it's so annoying. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even when my husband and I would sometimes see like old reruns of certain shows, certain um, seasons we can't go back and watch together because mm -hmm. he gets in his feelings about it. Yeah. Then he, it brings up certain things that he, you know, yeah. feels away about. Trigger. So it's like, yeah, I'd rather not watch it yeah. with him. Certain, certain episodes that I know are gonna be touchy. Yeah. Candy, come in, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. Drew, tell us, what's the latest with Drop It With Drew? Oh my God, Drop It With Drew. Well, I'm dropping it. I don't know if y'all noticed. Yeah. Okay, let me see, okay. let me see. <laughs> no, okay, I'm not gonna lie. I don't like to work out. I have said that a million times, but after having three children, you know, things don't go away like they used to. Things don't sit in the same place that they used to. So I am on a constant journey. So we do 21 day challenges and then we take a break and then we get back on it. And really it's fun. It's a, it's a bunch of women. We're supporting each other. You know what I mean? But I like to eat. I'm from Chicago. I love to eat. So it is about moving your body and just being healthier. So are any of you ladies on board with Drop It With Drew yet? Has anybody signed up? Come on now. Let me hear what they got to say today. Anybody Anybody on board with Drop It With Drew yet? I tried to get on board, but it didn't last. She was like, Marlo, she sent me the menu, the program. And I did it for about, what, a week, Drew? Yeah, and then I talked to you. You was like, um, I like to order the chicken wings I know. and the french fries. Oh, I said, Marlo, what I are tried. you doing? Uh, yeah, you like to eat too much. I, oh, ditto, yeah, I ditto. We like to. <laughs> Speaking. But you look amazing, I must say. Thank, Thank you, you, Marla. You appreciate it. Yeah, dropitwithdrew.com is working. So anybody that would like to sign up, 
Please do. I know. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Um, speaking of businesses, you know where I'm going next. She by Sheree. Up and running. Yeah. Up and running. I think it's going to be spring, summer, something soon. Spring what's summer. next for the next? What's next? For, is there another line coming? What's next for She by Sheree? Oh my gosh, so my vision for She by Sheree from the beginning had been a lifestyle brand. So not just athlete, athleisure, but babies, um, home, because I'm very passionate about decorating. I loved um, just home decor. So it's a lifestyle brand, so I'm working on babies' uh, clothing, a, ba a baby line, and also wanting to move forward with home design. Okay. So we got, we got She by Shrek candles and, and everything coming. Yes, everything coming. <laughs> um, so I feel like obviously there was a lot of criticism about the initial rollout and you had a lot of starts and stops which you were very honest about on camera. Was, is there anything you would have done differently if you could go back in time? You know what I think? The issue that I, one of the main issues that I have, wait, how, back, how far back in time? <laughs> well, the first, well let's go with this most recent time. Okay, the most yeah. recent time. I feel like I've just really been a one-woman show for a very long time, and it's been me trying to find a good team and reliable people. So I think that, you know, we're, we're working on that now because it's been overwhelming. I, I knew I had a lot of people who supported me, who wanted to support the line, who loved me, but it was so overwhelming, and I did not expect the volume that was going to come through like that. Yeah. Yeah. How do you stay confident in your vision when everyone on social media, there's memes, the other housewives are, you know, see them talking about it. How do you stay confident in this is still my goal and I'm going to still keep going for it? You know what? I kind of drown out the noise. You have to drown out the noise. And I, I, I am the poster for never give up on your dreams. Candy, Absolutely. you okay? <laughs> I didn't say Candy is giving me a look like, <laughs> like what is that face? <laughs> Candy, you are literally giving me a look like. <laughs> I didn't even know I was making faces. I'm just listening. That, that facial expression. Candy. That's a resting listening face. That's a resting listening face. <laughs> I, I say never give up, give up on your dream. If it's your passion, with determination, hard work is not my time, it's God's time, and it's going to happen. What made you want to come back to the show? Okay, so first of all, this is my third time coming back to the show. Yeah. And it's, I've made history because it's not been done before. The love, you know what? I was in a very good place in my life. I didn't have a lot of drama going on this, this go around, you know, before I was going through a divorce. I was going through, you know, so many different things. And I've been very authentic and very open with sharing on camera. But this go around, when they approach me, it's like, okay, I, I feel good. I'm in a good place. And being back with these ladies, it is like a sisterhood. It is, the energy was, it was like a complete shift. And I really enjoyed this season. Yes. Yeah. I have to say, I love seeing how everyone rallied around you after the whole Tyrone situation, because I feel like all of us wanted to punch him in the face. Um, oh. <laughs> just saying. Um, have you heard from him? What's the status with you guys? I have not heard from Tyrone since that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he said, screw him. Tyrone. I've not heard from him. Yeah. So you have a new man in your life. Is this correct? Mm. <laughs> I am. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yes, I'm having fun. I'm okay. enjoying life. I am dating. And okay, what's so wrong with that? I came from a horrible situation. Yeah. So I'm just wanting to have fun right now. Do you think that we will see Martel in the next season of Housewives? Is that a possibility? That is a good possibility. Oh, OK. Yeah. yeah. A good possibility. I will take it. Um, so I need to take a moment to bow down to our OG, Candy, <laughs> Miss Candy Coated, um, who, first of all, the piano lesson is premiering tonight on Broadway. Is that right? Um, the opening night was Thursday, yes. Thursday, this weekend. That is amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. What can you tell us about the piano lesson? And I feel like you worked on a few Broadway shows. What was it about this one that, that called to you and Todd? 
Well, the, oh, um, the piano lesson is written by August Wilson, yep. and it's also, he won a Pulitzer Prize for this. So it was already a Pulitzer Prize winning play. Yeah. This is the revival, and it's directed by Latanya Richardson Jackson, yes. who she's gonna be the first woman to direct this project on Broadway. So you know I'm always about women empowerment, you yes. know? So I was excited about that, and then I'm excited about it. You know, I was excited about our cast. Samuel L. Jackson, wow. Danielle Brooks, John David Washington, Trey Byers. We got, like, an, a, you know, an amazing cast. And, uh, you know, and it's just like, how could I not want to be a part of this show and producing? So this is at my second time being a producer on Broadway. Todd is also producing as well, so it's his first time. And, you know, we praying that, you know, this time, you know, we come back with Tony on this one. Yes, yes. Tony! But this show is amazing, guys, and I would love for you guys to go see it. It's going to be playing all the way through to January. Oh, I love it. Nice. Support, support. Um, Candy, as I mentioned, you're, you're an OG. I, I've been curious because you've been with the Housewives franchise for such a long time. What do you think makes a good housewife? <laughs> well, okay, first of all, I always say it has to be somebody who doesn't mind being their true selves on camera mm. and all. Like, I hate when somebody fakes their life on camera. Mm. You know, I see people who try to come on the show and they try to do this fake life thing they do on camera, and it's like, it, it always ends up catching up with them. Yeah. It always ends up catching up with them. So I like people- Do you have any people, specific examples? Well, I'm not putting people on blast. <laughs> I have to try, I have to try. Put them well, on blast. Well, you know, they've always caught people in lies on the show. Right. And I like, I like the years when they end up rewinding the tape on you, <laughs> you know? They've done that to people. Like, in the past, though, they did not do that. So, like, you know, in earlier years, you know, you know, Sheree, in past years, when we used to be like, oh, now how did this person get away with this, and blah, 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 blah. But because, that was because they used to didn't rewind the tape on them. Mm -hmm. But now I'm so glad that they rewinded the tape on these bitches. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because now, you, you know, it, 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 it reveals the people to the people. The you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So that's important. Right. But I like when people can be their true selves and not faking it till they make it. That's the first thing. And then somebody who will really stand up for themselves, right? Who not scared to speak up for themselves, stand up for themselves, and, um, you know, and, um, you know, who will show their family, and people who got interesting people in, like, around them as well. Because yeah. I think another, a lot of people think just because, you know, they got a lot, you know, their interesting personality that makes an interesting cast member, but we want to see your family, we want to see your relationship, we want to see the stuff that's happening with you as well. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to know when you walk away from the group that you got other stuff going on. So we like to see all that stuff on the show, and we want you to be open to showing it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be telling us you ain't gonna show us stuff. Yeah. We want to see. Uh, we do want to see it. That's why and we're here. And don't be getting mad because we gonna talk about it either. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. So I, I mean, you know, it is what it is. So basically, all the things you've done, I, all the things that you've done, make a good housewife. Just say. <laughs> no, <I'm> just <laughs> Sonia, how did you get connected with Housewives of Atlanta, and what made you want to join the show? Um, so, um, most of you guys know I like being first, <laughs> and so uh, when I had the opportunity to be the first Olympian, the first Jamaican, but, 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 um, that was very appealing to me, and obviously I think the Housewife franchise is absolutely incredible. I look at all of these women as bosses, and so to be able to join the cast was just a great way for me to transition from sports into kind of this next phase of my life. And so it's been a lot of fun, you know, to be able to share my family, to share my passions with the audience, and I've enjoyed that. Who gave you, yes. I'm curious, who gave you the hardest time with joining this new group of women, would you say? Ooh, who gave me the hardest time? Let me guess. <laughs> Um, well, obviously, I had the hardest time with Drew. But it's crazy because I think we both went into the show really wanting to be friends and really wanting to build a friendship. 
and obviously things happened on and off camera that didn't allow for that to happen. But I am certainly hoping that we can push past that uh, because I'm tired of going back and forth with that. But, um, you know, I think, yeah, unfortunately it was definitely me and Drew that ended up having the biggest issues in my first season. Um, you recently posted a video hangout with Cynthia, which I love to see. How is Cynthia and... Uh -uh. I just wanted to say one thing. Did oh, oh, I give you... I just, I just still have to ask the question because I never really got an answer. Did I give you a hard time or did you try to pull a hard time from me? I just, I'm just still, because I don't know what I did to you specifically. I, I, <laughs> Do the people want to know? I just want to know. Listen, Drew, once again, here you go. We both said we were gonna try to lie. You, you, you texted me and said you wanted an olive branch, right? Once again, off camera. Yesterday, you were like, let's, and then you come on here and you bring in the energy. I'm trying to give you positive energy, baby. Let's be positive. Stop that. Positivity. Let's be positive. Yes, and I after did, I- Listen, for whatever I, I, reason, I we given, ended up having a hard time. I didn't, bring, I didn't want to bring it to you. But there was you didn't never bring an it issue. To me, so we had a hard time. That's just the there reality of it. There was never an issue. But I don't have okay, an issue. Moving on. Moving on. Thank moving you. On. I don't have an issue. Moving on. I don't have an issue. Moving on. There's no issue. Moving on. Moving on. Moving on. I don't have an issue. Talk about that when we see each other next week. Moving on. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Sonia, I was going to ask you about Cynthia because I saw that you guys yes. have been hanging out. How is she doing? And do you think that she would ever come back to Housewives of Atlanta? So, first of all, I love me some Cynthia Bailey. Do y'all love Cynthia? So I loved that comparison when I came on the show. Everybody was like, oh, you're like the new Cynthia. And so to get to meet her in person, and we've actually had conversations, and she's been so, she's been so kind, you know, like very encouraging to me. Will Cynthia come back to the group? I don't know. I think the OGs probably know more than I do, but I certainly would love to have her back on. I love it. Um, before I go to audience questions, I have a question for each of you. Andy Cohen calls you. He says, I want to switch you to another franchise. Which one are you picking? Drew, you I'm going to Beverly Hills. Oh, oh Beverly Hills? I'm going to Beverly Hills. Okay. I am too. Okay. <laughs> that was a no-brainer. Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills. Hills. Said. All of them? I mean, ain't nowhere better than Atlanta, but if I had to choose, Potomac. Okay. Jersey, I'm friends with so many of the other ladies. I would want to go somewhere where I would feel at home. Oh, I could go over there with Teresa and play around. I could, I mean, I could go over there with, you know, uh, Kyle and play around over in Beverly Hills. You know, I used to live in LA for like 20 years, so that would feel like home too. And I love me some Giselle. And you gotta pick so one. I don't, know. I don't know, I can't answer that one. So you want to do another Ultimate Girls Trip, is what you're saying. I would like <laughs> another Ultimate Girls Trip with my friends, another group, yes. <laughs> Drew, what about you? Oh my God, so many. I mean, I love Dubai. I've never been oh, there. Big one. Dubai was just beautiful. Um, but I mean, my girls are in Potomac, so Candace, Giselle was my first lady, Karen Huger. It would be a lot of fun. They're all so good, yeah. Right? Yes. Candy? I'm not moving. <laughs> Okay, so kind of like Mary Kill, but demote, fire, bring back. Good one. Good one. The audience is worse than what you did. What's that? Demote, fire, and bring back. That's the question for each person, so go ahead, Sheree. Okay, I would bring back Kim Zosiak. Okay. Wait, I had two. Kim Zosiak or Lisa Wu. Okay. I like Or Lisa Wu. Okay. I don't want to demote or fire anyone because I don't want to mess. You know, I, that's not my place. That, I, to take money out of anyone's hand, their family. I, 
I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Are you scared to say who I think you think everyone's you would great. Ooh, I think it works well, and I think everyone's great. Okay. Okay. Work in progress. <laughs> okay, Marlo. You got That's right. Who would you, who would you demote? Yeah, Marlo. Anyone else? You, you going to answer? I wouldn't fire anyone. Where I'm from, I'm really big on firing people and taking away from their lifestyle and their familyhood. So I would never fire you. Never. Kenya, the people want to know your answer. The I just want to say I would love to see Portia come back. Okay. I miss her so much. <laughs> And I'm with the rest of the ladies, you know. I think we have a great group. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to say demote or fire any one of us. So, <laughs> Kenya, what do you say, Kenya? Go, Kenya. Or Kenya, at least. Kenya. Kenya, at least tell us who you would bring back. Who would you bring back? What? Who would you bring back at least? Who would you bring back? Oh, who I would. you guys might not like this. I'm just, again, I'm gonna be the most honest voice on this stage. I've not always gotten along with her. I know that people are not in a good place with her, but Nene. Good question. All right, next question from the audience. Okay. Who's up? Jen from Atlanta, hey everybody. Um, I think the reason that we all love you is because you keep it real. So I have a serious question. Please be honest. What actually happened that night with Bolo? <laughs> Next door. What happened, Candy? Candy told me what happened. <laughs> so tell the people tell what the happened. Folks. Two people, maybe three people here know exactly. Not you. Okay. Well, I think you know. I would definitely say. sleep. <laughs> I don't think you would say. But Candy knows. And myself. And me. No. And listen, I think we all know what happened. Question. They had a taste of a lot of different Did she sticks and candy. It? Tanya got the hell out of town, so <laughs> she took the first thing smoking back to Toronto. She never came back. She never came she back, came. <laughs> She was like, <laughs> she wasn't by herself. <laughs> Anything to add, Candy? But this couch is saying you have all the answers. They have fun. They and who was they exactly? Just to clarify. They had it. They. Okay. <laughs> it's not a secret, is it? Okay. All right. Uh, next question. Hey, ladies. How you doing? You look amazing. You're all incredible. Uh, I'm gonna keep it light. And since Marlo and Sheree, you guys are sitting next to each other, I'm wondering if you can recreate your Africa fight for us a little bit. is for Marlo. Yes. So, Marlo, me and my friends are here from St. Pete. St. Pete, the bird is in the house! And we want to know, when are you bringing the cast to St. Pete? Because we want to get it showcased. We love it. 
Listen, I literally just brought that up to the producers. I'm like, we have to bring them to St. Petersburg, Florida. Yeah. So the way you made sure I got a peach, just pray and hopefully it happens this season. All right, well, call us when you get there. Right, I love you. <laughs> Task trip. So I have a question piggybacking off what Candy was talking about, about the rewind and how a lot of us are moms or parents and I appreciate how Kenya and the rest of you really keep it real about how tough it is to leave family and kids. So I guess as a general consensus, what would you say are some of your most pivotal rewind, watch the playback, caught you in a lie, Atlanta moments? Who said that? Who said Who that? Said it? <laughs> that was I think that was like the biggest lie in the history of... <laughs> Because <laughs> that was so crazy. He was like, who said that? Who said that? Who said that? I said that? That was like, you said that? I was so shocked. I, was, I could not believe that. It was crazy. And I think she was the first one to say It was a constant rewind and catching people that year, yeah. Yeah. I believe. The constant. Oh, thank you. Anyone you said, else? Worldwide! <laughs> Remember the um, the voicemail with Cynthia when she had the the butt dial on the phone? Oh. She played it back. That was a good one. For me, it was this season. I mean, I, it's a lot of of rewinding moments. But wait, but can I say I don't think they've ever had me in a rewind moment. Oh. I've never been in a moment oh, where lied. where I lied and they rewound me. Yeah. Oh, that's what I lied. Yeah, they. Oh, you don't lie. Yeah, don't lie. they've never rewound me. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I said what, what I, I said. said. <laughs> and what you said was some bullshit. <laughs> Candy, what would you? Is this something you would want to know? In another panel, Marlo brought up that when you go out of the country, your people have to explain who you are to the people that are in that country. Like, listen, this is Candy. Boo. Would you want to know something like that? <laughs> you said she said people have to explain who I am. Right. She says she gets much love in other countries, but your your people have to explain. Listen, this is Candy. You, Candy Burris from Atlanta, and she's important and she's famous. Whatever. Oh, they don't have to explain who you are, Marlo? Not in New York? No, New York, no. Definitely not. No, no, I thought you said in other yes. countries, they never have to explain who you are. New York, everyone knows you're in New York. No, no, no. He but just said... I just said, told you. I didn't say New York. I said country. He just said on said another country. panel... Don't believe everything you hear. You know I tell the truth. I said countries, not New York. No, don't tell Ty the truth. Mr. New York. They definitely know who you are, and plus the world knows who you are in New York. No, not no, New York. No, 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 no. He said <laughs> that you said... <laughs> on another panel, he said that I had to explain who I am in another country, and I'm asking you yes. when no, you're in another exactly. country. that's not exactly. He's not telling you everything. He should be on the show, <laughs> but they brought up what I said about you not being worldwide. And I said I didn't explain it clearly. What I was saying is that when we do go to different countries, if we go to Dubai, um, London, Paris, that I would not have to explain or tell them who I am or what I do because of my presence and just what I look like, doors would open. <laughs> That's what I said. I, and I said that people would be real. They would say they know where I was coming from. Not throwing shade to you, but coming from my upbringing, a lot of doors have opened for me just because of my appearance. Okay, can we go back to that fire question? <laughs> Do you agree? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the ones that are being honest and understand what I'm saying. Oh. Oh. Her presence makes the doors open wide. They do. When she steps up. I mean, you guys saw it on In other you countries, saw it on but it doesn't happen here in the United States. <laughs> well, I, I will understand say this. now. This I is part of this world, darling. Thank you for explaining. I get it now.
now. Thank you. Thank You're you. right. No one knows me in New York. No one. <laughs> All right. It's not a lot of delusion on this stage, right? Yeah. You do sound delusional. Well, my question for you, Kenya, is um, since you are the shade assassin of Atlanta, who do you think is the shade assassin of their franchise from another city? Okay, so I would say on um, Potomac, Candace. Yes. On Dubai, Chanel. Uh, from Jersey. Who from Jersey? Who on Jersey? Jen. Jen Aiden. Margaret? My, maybe I Margaret? Like Margaret. From, yeah, yeah, Margaret. And with that, I would like to thank y'all for sharing your lives with so many of us in our dark times, for being open, and for being trailblazers for the housewives. Thank you so much. And thank you all for joining us today.